Mr. Garen, one, one of the things that, that and, and I've, we've, I've mentioned this before in, in other hearings, but the Recovery Act includes um, money for federal buildings and U.S. courthouses. In addition, the Recovery Act authorizes GSA to initiate, design, construction, repair, alteration, and other projects through existing authorities of the administrator. Now, um, GSA has an existing authority uh, to acquire property, to strategically acquire property if, if uh, you know, for example, to, to, to help save stalled buildings that may be out there. Um, that would create jobs, obviously would help the neighborhood, would help the, whole, help the whole area, but would also create jobs, buildings that are might be, you know, that were starting to go up and now, and they're now dead, frankly, and there's a bunch of them out there, unfortunately, mm -hmm. throughout the entire country. Um, and, uh, you know, GSA's Purchase Opportunity Program in the 80s did a heck of a good job in creating opportunities for the taxpayer to save money um, precisely by doing that. And, and so I'm hoping that you're looking at that. Are you? And, and if not, why not? I mean, you know, here we have opportunity to create jobs and also here we have an opportunity to, uh, to on a short and long term, help the taxpayer in a real substantial way while creating jobs. Um, it's not something that uh, you have to reinvent the wheel. It was done by GSA in the 80s. Uh, who are you? We do have the authority, uh, yes. and, and we, we and it worked to, successfully in the 80s. Uh, yes, uh, and we are continuing to look at, at using that authority and uh, judiciously where we can afford to do that uh, with projects. We are not doing that through the Recovery Act. We we looked at uh, at those uh, uh, projects uh, again, as you said, uh, the new construction program uh, as as opportunities for us to complete federal buildings. Uh, and we thought the legislation was written in a way that that, that that was the target of the legislation to take care of our federal building program. And we have quite a backlog of federal buildings, uh, courthouses and land ports of entry. So we looked at that. Uh, we, uh, we also included a couple projects that were going to be leased projects but, but are now uh, being converted to federal buildings, including Billings in Bakersfield and a, uh, a F FBI building in, in uh, San Juan. And I believe there's one other one, Congressman. Uh, so we, we, we converted several leases to ownership specifically for that purpose. Which saves a lot of money for the taxpayer. I, I long -term. hope so, yes. Absolutely. Definitely. Now, but but that, that should free up some money, though, for you. I mean, the, the bottom line is that you had projects in the pipeline, now you're going to be able to do them. Should, that is not, is not, not going to free up some money for you? Uh, it it, it uh, doesn't free up money in the Recovery Act, but the, uh, in future years, obviously, we won't be leasing those buildings. So in, in future years, it will allow us to use our leasing money more effectively. Right. So it does free up money in, in future years. Yes. All right. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'm trying to be brief, uh, Madam Chair, when I know that we just were called for, for votes. Can, can you elaborate a little bit on your position? Uh, it, what is it? Project Manager Office Executive? What, what is the? Program Management Office, yeah. Yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit about, about uh, your structure and, and, and yes. what that is and how that works and what, you, what you'll be doing? Yes. Uh, the, the Program Management Office is set up uh, in a three-tiered uh, program. We have regional executives uh, in each of our 11 regions focused uh, uh, primarily and entirely, I should say, on the Recovery Act projects in each of the regions. So those people are able to reach into the organization, uh, make sure that information is flowing properly, make sure people are in the right positions to do the work that they need to do to support the Recovery Act. Uh, they're reviewing staffing. Uh, Congresswoman Norton was talking about staffing earlier. They're making sure that they understand what the staffing requirements are in the regions and making sure that we have the resources we need to, uh, I think I'm feedbacking here, uh, to, uh, to make sure the Recovery Act goes well. Uh, then we have a, a second tier, which are zone executives. Uh, I, I announced in my opening comments that we've, we've just recently selected those three people. Uh, the zone executives are, are specifically a first line of defense uh, to, to ensure that uh, the projects are being reviewed and tracked properly, uh, to make sure that, that resources across regions are being shared where necessary, uh, so that if we have opportunities to, to use our, our few GSA resources more effectively, if someone in one region is not being used uh, to their full extent, we can, we can uh, swap those resources across regions. And those zone executives are designed to do that. They're, they're looking at uh, variants. They're looking at resources. They're looking at sharing, and particularly looking at lessons learned. So where we, where we have an opportunity to to learn a lesson and, and share something good to accelerate the program, we can do that quickly and effectively through the zone executives. 
Then in the central office, uh, under my direct purview, is, is a group of people that are specifically there to uh, provide the tracking and reporting function uh, that, that uh, Congress requires uh, and, and OMB certainly requires through the program. We have a series of stakeholders that are quite interested in everything that we do, and we're making sure that we have the reporting function set up to both track projects, make sure that they're happening appropriately, jump in where we need to to, uh, to, to save projects that are getting themselves in trouble, to revamp the list where necessary. If a project starts to go haywire and it will not recover, we, we need to be able to jump on that right away and, and shift the funds to a different source, uh, to a different project to make sure that those, those funds get spent wisely. And then finally, uh, they're there to uh, provide that reporting function that I described. Thank you. I, you know, I have a number of questions, but, but our time is limited. I know that Ms. Edwards probably has a question, too, so I'll, I'll uh, if I may, just uh, t to Mr. Miller, a couple of questions. Again, I had a lot more than that, but, but um, are, are you going to be able to also review um, um, the number of jobs created by, by the projects um, among the things that you're looking at? Because obviously this is supposed to be for that purpose. Well, um, Congressman, um, most of the GSA uh, projects are, are building projects. That's the, the majority of, of uh, the projects. We, we will be focusing on, on those projects and the specific, particularly the challenges I, I laid out in my uh, testimony. Uh, so we will we'll be looking at the effectiveness of the project as well. But um, certainly we would uh, be happy to uh, include that as one of the items that we, we look at. Mr. Miller, you highlighted that the potential for cost escalations and delays in your testimony, obviously, and you also make the point that that's not a new issue. Um, with, with the workload increase, um, what can be done differently, though, to minimize those, those risks? If I may um, go back to your earlier question about job creation, um, I understand now that uh, according to Office of Management and Budget, they've given the Department of Commerce the responsibility of looking at job creation so that my office will not be looking at that particular aspect. So uh, I, I, I'm sorry I gave you an incorrect answer before. Um, these are historical problems that uh, GSA faces. Uh, the uh, cost escalations, the, the time delays, and uh, they're well aware of these issues. And uh, you know, I, I assume that Mr. Guerin and others are taking efforts to try and correct them. But we will be keeping our eye on that, those issues and looking at those issues very carefully. Great. Thank you, Mr. Miller.